Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Ahmed again for Idionix and this is beginning DevOps section 4, configuration management using Ansible. So in this lecture, we are going to get introduced to Ansible as a tool in more technical terms and we are going to start installing it on our Ubuntu machine as well as on our CentOS machine. So what is Ansible? In the previous lecture, we have been introduced to the configuration management tools and we learned why configuration management is needed and why configuration management in general is much better than shell scripts when it comes to configuring large environments or complex infrastructures. So what is Ansible and where does it fit in the big picture? It is one of the DevOps tools concerned with configuration management. However, it is not the only tool in the market as there are other tools like, for example, Chef, Puppet, and Salt. Basically, all the tools do the same thing, but Ansible has some strength points. First, it's agentless. If you compare it to a tool like Chef or Puppet, you're gonna see that both of those tools need an agent to be installed on the target machines. This agent will receive instructions from a central server and start to apply those instructions on the machine. Of course, that can be done automatically and that is done automatically. Also, those agents can be run as standalone commands. However, at the end, you must install that agent on each and every machine in your infrastructure in order to be able to work with the configuration management tool. But with Ansible, you do not need to install that agent. You just use one machine that will be the client machine that can be your own personal laptop or computer or desktop computer and all what you need is an SSH connection between the client machine, between your machine and the target machines which naturally is established since you are the administrator of those machines. So you are going to use your existing connections, your existing infrastructure you are not going to add anything except install Ansible on your own desktop machine and it is going to do the rest. It is going to connect to your target machines and do whatever configuration management needed on them. The second strength point is that it uses Python for instructions. Python is one of the most popular scripting languages now and it's more than likely to be under the tool belt of a typical system administrator. Chances are you are already using Python for some of your daily administration tasks. And if not, or if you don't know about Python, that is not a problem because Ansible uses its own set of commands to handle configuration management. Once you get a grasp of those commands and those instructions, you are ready to use Ansible without even knowing anything about Python. Python here is just a strength point. If you know Python, you can greatly customize your playbooks or your Ansible scripts it's called playbooks as we are going to see later in this section but not knowing python will not prevent you from using ansible to the maximum the third strength point is that it uses ssh for connectivity to the remote servers ssh is the de facto standard security protocol that is used by system administrators to connect to linux and unix hosts it is now the most common way of connecting to remote hosts and Ansible, as we said, uses the existing connection, the existing infrastructure to start working. So it is going to use SSH, which is already used in your environment. Most probably it is the industry standard security protocol. So again, no need to even use a protocol that is unknown or that is new to you or to your security team. Now let's see how we can install Ansible. When it comes to installation, Ansible has two main methods either through the operating system package manager or through pip. And if you don't know about pip, that is probably because you don't know about Python. Pip is the package manager used by Python. It is used to download and deploy third party libraries used by Python. So if you are a Python developer or if you use Python in your administration tasks, you can use pip as it's easier to install Ansible. If not, you can use the operating system package manager and both of them are easy methods. If you are using a Mac OS, you can use Homebrew to install Ansible. And this is as simple as running brew install Ansible. So if you are on a Mac like me, let's have a look. And if you are here on the command line, just issue brew install Ansible just like that. And I have Ansible already installed on my 
Mac OS machine. So it's just going to upgrade Homebrew and inform me that Ansible is already installed. As you can see, Ansible is already installed. But if you don't have Homebrew installed, actually Homebrew is a tool that people download on their Mac machines in order to be able to download tools and programs that are typically used with Linux. So if you don't have Homebrew installed on your machine, just go to this URL docs.brew.sh slash installation and follow the instructions. It's very easy to install. It just takes a few moments and you have Brew on your command line. If you are on a Windows machine, it's better to use a virtual machine. You can use Vagrant for that and install Ansible in it. Unfortunately, Ansible is still not fully supported on Windows as a client platform for connecting to the remote machines. However, we already have Vagrant. You can install a Vagrant machine that has Ansible installed, or you can just deploy a Vagrant machine with CentOS or Ubuntu as the operating system and use the steps that we are going to follow now to install Ansible on any of them. So let's start with Ubuntu. I'm going to clear the screen and let's create a directory. Let's call it ansible-lab. Okay, let's create another directory. Let's call it Ubuntu and Vagrant in it been to we've done this before if you haven't watched it, the Vagrant section this is a command that is just going to install Ubuntu version 16.10 Vagrant init is going to create the Vagrant file Vagrant up is going to bring that machine to life it's going to launch it and once launched it we are able to connect to it and work inside it let's give it a few moments okay so now the machine has been launch it let's clear the screen and let's issue vagrant ssh to get inside the machine now the first thing i'm going to do is that i am going to add a repository a repository for ubuntu is just a storage or a place where packages are available for download so i'm going to use apt add repository and then give it the name of the repository ppa ansible slash ansible a connection issue let's just issue that command again and let's press enter to accept the new repository okay now the second step is to do sudo apt get update and that is to update the software repositories with the new repository that has been just added this is a mandatory step you have to do it before you can attempt to install ansible from the new repository Okay, and once done, we are going to issue sudo apt get install ansible just like that. And press yes to begin download. It's gonna take a few moments depending on your internet connection. Okay, once done, let's clear the screen and let's issue ansible dash dash version just like that. This will give you the current version of ansible which at the time of this recording is 2.3.1.0. Let's do the same thing, but on a CentOS machine. CentOS and uh, Ubuntu are of the most well-known or most used Linux flavors. So let's exit from this machine and let's create a new directory that is called CentOS. Let's go to CentOS. And we're gonna do the same thing, Vigrant add init. And we're going to do the same thing, Vigrant init ben2 slash centos dash 7 dot 3 second step vagrant up give it a few moments to launch okay now let's clear the screen issue vagrant ssh to get inside the machine and we are going to again install the repository that is needed to install ansible but on centos so it is called the epel release repository and it can be installed easily by using yum install epel dash release and when prompted press yes and epel dash release has been installed successfully let's clear the screen and sudo yum dash y in order not to be prompted for a confirmation and then install ansible Okay, and once installed, let's clear the screen, issue ansible, dash dash version, 
and it's going to give you the same version that has been installed on the Ubuntu machine. Now, let's say that you want to install it using Python. Of course, the first thing you have to make sure that Python is installed. So Python dash dash version, yes, 2.7.5. And you are going to use pip to install Ansible. If you don't have pip, you can install it easily by using sudo easy install. And actually, this is common for CentOS and Ubuntu. The same command will be used on both machines. Okay, now let's clear the screen. And pip, yes, it's installed. So now let's turn pip install Ansible, just like that. Of course, it's already installed. Let's get out of that machine. And that brings us to the end of this lecture. In the coming lecture, we are going to execute our first Ansible command, and we are going to see how Ansible connects to the remote hosts on your infrastructure, how it manages them, how it identifies them. So until then, see you next.